What's up guys, today we're playing some Kerbal Space Program, and if you can tell from the thumbnail already, we're sending a rather large buggy over to Duna, as well as an ascent vehicle. We're gonna take a lot of science from, well all the science really, from a biome that we land in, take that buggy and uh, just see how much science we can we can farm off of the surface of Duna before we leave back home for Kerbin. Uh, here we're doing a standard ascent profile, I've already hit 45 degrees and I'm just waiting for my apoapsis to get to 100. Once I've gotten there I'm going to go ahead and focus on circularizing and show you what's underneath the fairing right about now. So here you can see the, the rover, it's uh, attached to the ascent vehicle as well there's a transfer stage with some nuclear engines. We're going to time warp up to our apoapsis and fire up the vectors. Now there's a lot of flex in that first stage, that's why it looked a little ridiculous, but once we hit the second stage, all that flex was gone and we've circularized. And we're going to start thinking about how we're going to get to Duna. Uh, I've set up the launch while being in a transfer window for uh, Duna, so it was really not that difficult. All I had to do was uh, push the prograde marker until my apoapsis around the sun was in line with Duna and it just happened to be there when I'll get there. So we'll time warp to when it's time to do our maneuver and here's our escape burn. Uh, I planned originally to do the entire burn with just the nuclear engines but I over engineered the first stage. I don't think I really needed those two boosters that ended up uh, landing on top of the KSC anyways. But uh, I thought it looked cool. It looked very space launch system-y. Uh, well, something you'll notice here is that I didn't actually get the encounter like I thought I would on the burn. I uh, didn't want to really touch anything like the, the radial or the, or the anti-normal normal nodes, but I did want to get as close to Duna's orbit as I could with just prograde. And then uh, at my ascending node, I'm going to go ahead and change my inclination so that I am in uh, in line with Duna's, uh, Duna's equator. And here you'll notice that I am in fact not in line. I realized that after time warping to the maneuver, I uh, quickly changed it and I did not miss my maneuver. I was really surprised by that. So here's a uh, burn with uh, with some, some radial out just to get my uh, periapsis really low. Uh, I got to 61. Duna's, uh, Duna's atmosphere is actually at 50,000 kilometers, but I knew that I could just do a radial inburn once I got into Duna's sphere of influence. In fact, you saw me do that right there. Now that I'm inside of the atmosphere, I'm just going to spin around to try to create as much drag as possible. And uh, here you'll see I made a terrible mistake. If you can see my uh, periapsis on the bottom left of this screen, it is screaming down. And uh, here you can see that I will impact the ground. Right there you see where I made my grave mistake. I hit F5 instead of F9. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to fix this. What I decided to do is reload that quick save that I just did. Flip around prograde. And burn like hell until my uh, apoapsis was out of the atmosphere again. Again, that's at 50,000. So I got it down to 68. And uh, here I had the problem where pretty much my entire orbit around... Duna is inside the atmosphere and I had to use physics time acceleration. It took me about 10 minutes real time just to get out of the atmosphere just to circularize again and stabilize around Duna. I got very close to just scrapping the whole mission and starting over again but uh, that just shows you you gotta really focus on your, uh, your, your, your quick saves a little better. I know you can hear my dog in the background. I'm not gonna stop her from being a dog. She's just gonna do dog things underneath my desk right now. She's playing with a bone. Uh, what am I doing here? I don't actually know. Oh, I'm going to be transferring my Kerbals from the transfer stage into the uh, the buggy. I have two right there, Jebediah and Bob. Uh, they're going to be making their way down to do the initial uh, science capture, but Valentina will stay in the transfer stage above. She's going to pilot the ascent vehicle down after the mission is uh, closing. Uh, here we're coming down. I really over-engineered this, uh, this little crane here. Our uh, parachutes really get us down underneath the tolerance of these, uh, the impact tolerance of these tires. They're actually really resilient. I didn't realize that. Um, 
I could have just had this crane drop us off, but I over-engineered and I put some solid boosters here, and here you're going to see the most beautifully executed maneuver. I'm barely going to drop this, this, this rover. It's not going to fall very far at all. And I panicked and I fell about five meters. Uh, uh, that, that worked a lot better when I tested it, but I got scared of how close we were to the ground and I, I just I hit that stage far too soon. Uh, so, but we made it in one piece, nothing exploded. Um, turn on the brakes all the way up to maximum because Duna's gravity makes it really easy to just slip and slide along the surface. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and deploy uh, everything. I did a crew report to see where I was. I happen to it happened to be that I'd already been here before in this biome, just on the other side of the planet. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do all the science anyways. Here you can see the payload's been opened up, the payload doors. You can see exactly all of the uh, science that we've done. We've done pretty much all the science, except for the the new magnetometer, uh, which is bugged right now. It weighs uh, as much as a car, but it's like the size of the seismometer. Um, so I didn't feel like lugging that all the way down to Duna. But after doing all the science, uh, we're going to take a uh, short trip down to the bottom of this canyon. I know that this is going to be a different biome just because it's a prominent feature. Uh, buggy's a little uh, prone to flipping. You see I, I destroyed myself more than once. Uh, just did some quick save reloads. Uh, and I kind of just got a feel for it. I found out that if I stayed just below... 20 meters a second, uh, the bumps and me turning, uh, wasn't, it's not going to make me, uh, tip over. So I kind of just nursed the brakes all the way down, uh, until I decided that we were well within the biome and in a relatively flat zone, because this is where the ascent vehicle is going to land. And, uh, I wanted to, didn't want it to tip over. So taking that long journey down, flipped over again. I didn't quick save, uh, so I didn't want to start over. I lost the antenna, but it was mostly aesthetic. I don't really, there's no pro cores and I'm not transmitting any data. So I just decided to just keep going. Uh, figured out we're in the East Canyon biome. So I went ahead and did all my science again. Had Bob jump out, plant a flag, ignore that spelling. If you were <laughs> quick enough to see it, I misspelled Canyon and I realized it after the fact, but uh, here we are at the final landing site. So now our cripples are stranded on the surface of Duna. We got to get them away uh, back into orbit. So here we are back on the transfer stage, which happens to have the uh, ascent vehicle. I went ahead and planned a maneuver to drop the vehicle just past our Kerbals. And I did this a couple times. I wasn't really comfortable or familiar with uh, Duna's atmosphere. It doesn't really play like uh, Kerbin's atmosphere. Uh, so it took me quite a few tries. I didn't get that close, but uh, you can just copy what I did here. I got the uh, I got my orbital line to be just past the Kerbals, and I just uh, uh, ditched that transfer stage and just you know watched the show. I didn't really have much to do here until uh, we got really close to the ground. That's, those uh, markings over there, are the Kerbals. Oh, you'll notice the transfer stage whizzing, whizzing by. This is so not something that NASA or ESA would do. They're not going to throw their transfer stage at their science crew on the ground. That landed probably one or two kilometers away from them. That was probably a brilliant show. But uh, uh, we're just going to do a quick puff with that, uh, that aerospike engine. And uh, we're landed. And we're only... Uh, I didn't catch the, the mark. I think we're about 20 kilometers away. No, 12. We're 12 kilometers away. So I hopped down... Took a surface sample just to see if this happened to be a different biome, and uh, it wasn't. It was, in fact, still the East Canyon. Uh, so our, our, our Kerbals actually have 8 kilometers. I don't know where I got 12 from. 8 kilometers to travel. It's no problem with the Duna, with the Duna buggy. So here's some cinematic shots, some explosions. I wanted to get a good HUDless view of what the rover looked like. This is at real time traveling over the surface of Duna, doing some sick jumps, bro. Uh, yeah, so here we are. We've made it to the ascent vehicle. We pulled up. I wanted to get real close to Valentina there. And uh, now you probably noticed from the size of our ascent vehicle that it is not going to get us back home to Kerbin. 
And that's on purpose. Its only job is to get us off of Duna. To get back to Kerbin, we have this space plane. This It's a single stage to orbit. Uh, it's one of my first. I'm not really comfortable with single stages to orbit yet. Uh, so I decided may as well just throw myself into it. Uh, and I built this. So uh, using the rapiers here, I just kind of kept a, a shallow ascent profile, less than 20 degrees, I believe, off the horizon. That still gave me enough uh, thrust with the rapiers to get past the magical 14, 1440, 440 meters a second. Uh, that's where they really start kicking in. If you notice my G's here, I start really uh, pushing pa almost to two. So doing most of my acceleration uh, near the bottom, near the, the lower atmosphere, but uh, we're going to push out into the more thinner part of the atmosphere, and I'm just going to play around with my prograde uh, SAS just to get my nose down a little bit without uh, ripping my wings off going this speed. Uh, but right about here, uh, I, I hit prograde sometime eventually, uh, to really gain as much speed on the air breathing mode as possible before I choke the rapiers and put them into the close cycle mode. So there they are. They're now in close cycle. They're not as efficient as they are when they're breathing the oxygen inside of Kerbin's atmosphere. So go ahead and, uh, pitch up to 30 degrees. I think that's a really good compromise. Uh, uh, and just watch my, uh, apoapsis and until it gets to 100 and kill the rapiers. Uh, so I didn't use all the oxidizer that I thought I would. Uh, luckily I brought this, uh, this drain valve. So I just got rid of all the oxidizer so we don't have to lug it all the way to Duna. And uh, coast up to the Apolapsis. I'm going to be a real relative, I mean for SSTO, my SSTOs at least, short circularization burn. It was only two minutes I believe, one minute and some change. Uh, and here we are in orbit. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with the uh, buggy. Just get our periapsis up to the uh, line of Duna's uh, orbit. Uh, ag again, I time warped until I was in a transfer window. So that Duna would be there while I happened to be there at the same time. And this was a uh, three minute burn, I believe. And... This, w this time I was able to get the uh, the encounter in one burn, but I'm still going to do a deep space burn to bring my periaps down to the equator and also make sure that my inclination is correct. Here I am making that burn now, I believe, eventually. Here it is. I overshot it, but it wasn't that big a deal. And uh, again, I'm going to do a radial end burn once I hit the sphere of influence to get my desired... Uh, altitude, which was 27,000 meters. I caught it this time. Uh, for my aerobaking maneuver, I'm just going to hold an aggressive angle like this. Try not to go above 90, uh, which I, apparently I did. Uh, and that's just going to, uh, you know, make as much surface area with the uh, in contact with the atmosphere at the same time so that uh, we created a lot of drag. There was a little uh, flyby of some Duna buggy debris. Uh, I'm not sure entirely what that was, but it was very close. It was just um, kind of lucky. So, going to circularize here at Periaps. We happen to be flying over our crew right now. I thought that was really neat. Two uh, happy accidents. So now we're going to time warp to a transfer window with Kerbin. So now instead of going from Kerbin to Duna, we're going from Duna to Kerbin. And I thought that looked real cinematic. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab all the science from the buggy and uh, load all three of our Kerbals in the ascent vehicle. Uh, I kind of flung Bob into the vehicle and I didn't feel like waiting for him to stand up, so I got Valentina in first. She had that surface sample and that's why I got that dump experiment uh, message. My dog is chewing on a bone very close to the microphone. I'm sorry about it. Again, she's a dog. I'm going to let her do dog things. Uh, so now we're going to rendezvous with the uh, vehicle that will get us back, the SSTL. We're going to go ahead and reduce our drag and uh, jump into a 90 degree uh, ascent. Uh, the ascent on Duna is pretty similar to how I would uh, ascend on Kerbin. Just uh, hit 45 when the atmosphere is uh, hits that, uh, that lighter blue marker. It was not a very good ascent right here. You can see it's very... 
hyperbolic? No. What is that? Parabolic? No, it's hyperbolic. I don't know. Leave in the comment what bollock that is. Uh, I like my ascents to be a lot flatter than this. Uh, and this was kind of just up and down. And then I did a huge 500 meters a second burn at, at Abwabs to get... Uh, not only circularized, but I needed to get an encounter with the with the SSTO. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to do that. I wanted to make sure that it happened on the light side of the planet. I didn't want to be in the in the shadow and at the nighttime. Uh, and I got kind of lucky. I got a I got an 8.7 kilometer separation right there that encounter. I thought that was good enough. I'll uh, I'll do another burn, a real minimal burn, uh, while on orbit to uh to get that even down closer i believe i get that down to 1000 meters uh, a kilometer if you will so we're time warping up to our apoaps and firing up the aerospike i use the aerospike because it it generally has the same uh efficiency at all levels of atmosphere include and up to uh vacuum so it's a real good landing uh engine i believe that's why I chose that. So here I'm going to mess around trying to get that uh, that encounter down. And I, I messed around with this for a good 45 seconds to a minute. So uh, you don't have to watch all that. Uh, sped that up quite a bit. This is like 20 times uh, the speed that I did this at. And I got a nice 7.7 .7 meter a second maneuver. And that's going to get us to one kilometer of the space plane. And here it is now. You don't actually get to see me do the burn. Just trust me that the burn happened. Uh, and you can see that the that our speed changed by 7.7 .7 milliseconds. Oh, I removed the I removed the maneuver so that I could just watch it uh, happen myself. And when I got it down to one kilometer, I knew it wasn't really going to do better than that. I thought maybe if I changed my inclination, I might get closer. And it really just didn't help at all. So I eventually got rid of that. We're gonna time warp. All the way to uh, pretty just before the closest pass, so that I can uh, encounter the vehicle. Uh, so I went ahead and opened up the docking port, and I controlled from here, uh, targeted the docking port of the ascent vehicle, did the same thing on the ascent vehicle, and just did a puff to get ourselves uh, getting close. I slowed my down to, myself down to two meters a second. And just coasted the west, rest of the way. We're docked. We're going to transfer all of our Kerbals. And we're not going to forget to EVA and take the data from the Ascent Vehicle. There it is. It's now on the SSTO. And we're going to steal all of the liquid fuel. And we're just going to leave that in orbit. Uh, but before we do that, of course, we're going to make our maneuver node to get back home. Uh, so similar to uh, getting to Duna, just making sure that... Uh, when we get down to the orbit line of Gerbin, that it's going to be there while we're there. So the ascent vehicle was in the way, and so I just puffed around it, and then my burn uh, was in three seconds after that. So here we are leaving. Now you'll notice I left the ascent vehicle in orbit, uh, and that's not necessarily on purpose, but it's also not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I might think about sending a probe with uh, with uh, some mining. Uh, equipment on it to Ike to refill that lander and possibly do future missions if that's something that you guys would want to see you know let me know down in the comments and uh, I'll go ahead and plan that mission out and you know just refill the ascent vehicle and then send another crew uh, to land at that buggy the the rover is still there so uh, we theoretically it has some RTGs on it we can go anywhere on Duna it might take a while but we could do that uh, so now, now we're leaving, and we're going to do a quick uh, burn in deep space to bring our apolaps down to uh, close to the atmosphere. Uh, and then, just like we did at Duna twice already, we're going to do a radial in burn once we hit the sphere of influence to bring our, our periaps into the atmosphere. And I believe it shows 30,000? 30, 30, no, it shows 46,000. So that's what you get. And uh, I didn't necessarily do a great job with my uh, capture arrow breaks here. Uh, I ended up doing three, I believe, before I got down to an orbit that was low, that had an apoaps low enough that I didn't need to waste all of my remaining delta v. You see, I have 534 meters a second left. I needed some of that to uh, get back to the runway, 
So I wanted to bring my Apple apps down pretty low so I didn't have to have to uh, do that with the engine. So I end up doing three. I probably could have done that in one. Not again, this is my first SSTO in interplanetary at all, like anywhere. So I do a little mun encounter. That was a couple orbits ahead. Uh, that was not on the orbit that I was on, so I did not hit it. And uh, yeah, so that's the second pass. Third pass is gonna look very similar. And it brings me down to, I was like less than 500,000 meters, I believe. Yep. So, uh, I did some math with some maneuver nodes and I found out that I could use only 200 meters a second of my Delta V to circularize at 70-ish uh, thousand meters. So that, 70-ish thousand? Yeah, 70,000. Um, so that I can uh, line up with the KSC and land on the runway. So that's what I do in here. I just brought my... Uh, periaps above the atmosphere, and then I drop my apple apps down on the other side. So yeah, not much, not much to say about this. Which, you know, it it was slow. These uh these nuclear engines. This is one of the things I don't like about SSTOs is nuclear engines. That they're thrust away. It's awful. Like all the burns are like. Th three, four minutes. I think I had a five minute burn going to Minmus once. Oh god, Min yeah, Minmus. That was awful. So just making sure that uh my uh my rapiers were off. However, I'm going to turn them back on again. I did my uh my D orbit burn. Now I'm now on a suborbital trajectory. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for the last uh aero breaks. I'm just gonna lift my nose up a little bit relative to my Prograde marker. Oh, I also had to, I forgot to move the uh, fuel up uh, far forward on the the plane. So the the idea is once we've used most of our fuel, I really don't know really where my center of mass is going to be. I, I need it to be uh, ahead of the center of lift, which uh, which stays the same, but the center of mass moves. So just pump all my fuel forward just to keep stability. And uh, you can see here, just past these mountains that are just above the, the nose, that's where the KSC is. I'm definitely going to overshoot. So I'm going to, on purpose, definitely on purpose, did not do this on accident, uh, start rolling. Uh, I'm doing this on purpose, just pulling as many G's that I, uh, I can to stop. That's, I, I did this on purpose, cannot stress that enough. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I didn't do this on purpose at all. This just started happening and I started freaking out because I did not test this SSTO on low fuel. I was just assuming that my, uh, my, my it's just not going to fly like at, at the, with this weight, with the center of mass being so far backward. And then right here, I really started freaking out. I noticed that I could, in fact, maneuver, but I couldn't get my prograde marker up. And then I realized that I was on prograde on my SSS. It was it was tracking prograde, not stabilization. So I, I had a I was scared for no reason. Uh, so yeah, so here we are flying back to the runway. Uh, and I didn't really need all four of my uh, rapiers uh, just because I don't want to go fast. I in fact want to stay slow so that I don't have to slow down very much before the runway. So I only used two. Now you can hear my air conditioner going on in the background. This all just screams amateur, first movie ever. It's just all bad, it's all bad. I'm sorry you had to watch this. So here we are, we've cut the engine. We're uh, lining up with the runway, doing a just every pilot ever has gone completely inverted just to line up with the runway. Uh, and why not do that here? Hit the brakes, and we've landed. Uh, yeah, we did it. That was the whole. That was the whole movie. You saw me uh, take a buggy to Mars, not Mars. Do not do that a lot. Get data from more than one biome, and uh, and we left. And now and now we're home. That was the whole movie. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is my science mode. Uh, a save. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, see. We got two twenty two hundred. Uh, units of science was more than enough to grab the uh, the remaining nodes that I needed in my tech tree. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, if you wanted to see more content like this, let me know. And uh, have a great day.